Welcome to episode two of Inside Busaris. Um, I'm Chris Pugh, group editor for uh, Civitas Media. I'm here with our reporter, I'm Kim Caceres. How's it going, Kim? Good. Hey, um, on the second, we just want to take another look at what's happening here in Busaris. Kind of an interesting week. Um, first of all, um, Kim, you got to tell us, it seems like there's been an ongoing situation in Busaris Council, uh, Vicky Deshaun. Um, is she's been kind of at odds with counsel, and there was a court decision making. Talk about that a little bit. Um, Vicki Deshawn is the law director's clerk, and um, she filed a lawsuit against city council in Bucyrus, um for not following um, Ohio's open meeting laws. And um, the council decided late last week to settle with her out of court. Um, if it would have gone to court and she would have gotten everything she sued for, it would have been around fifty thousand dollars. And in this case, she's going to get a little over twenty thousand. Um, so I, I found that was interesting that they decided to settle with her. Um, I don't know that they're admitting they did anything wrong, but they did settle. So it's interesting. I mean, obviously, she's a you know a city employee. It's kind of interesting what. Kind of what gets her to write, or what's caused her to kind of come up with this action up against maybe somebody else who's a city employee? Is she more fired up about this than maybe another city employee? What kind of caused her to be the one to follow suit? Um, I think she watches more what the city council does, which you know anybody um, could actually sue them for if they're not following right. open meeting right. laws. Maybe she's just the only one that noticed and decided to do something about it. But it's important for public entities, you know, that are voted by the people to follow the open meeting laws. And um, you know, she's had some problems in the past with council. And so I think that's why she watches them more. Um, she was the law director's uh, clerk back when Andrew Motter was uh, the law director and um, went through a lot with that whole thing. He was actually uh, forced to resign and, and pled guilty to misdemeanor charges of, um, I forget what the actual charges were, but he was uh, basically watching porn on city property computers and okay. she worked in the office with him. Wow. <laughs> and so um, there were some issues there and I think since then she just watches the council closely and what they're doing and how they're handling things and who they're employing and all of that. So I think that's why she you know, noticed that they were not uh, following the open meeting laws and it was actually the council committees that were not um, posting their agendas. Like they were letting the public know when their meetings were but they weren't saying what they were going to be talking about. Which is really important in B. Cyrus because I noticed that a lot of people um, come to city council if they've got a complaint um, about something in their neighborhood or whatever, but there might be things that they'd be really interesting in discussing um, at the committee meetings because that's where the work is done before the legislation comes before council. And I don't think people realize that. People get mad after council passes, for instance, our higher water rates that we're now paying to pay for a new water treatment plant. People are mad about it and say they didn't know about it until after council passed it. And that's because the work in, in constructing that legislation was done in the committee meetings. And that's where the people need to go and present their argument on why that shouldn't happen if they're against it. And I think that was Vicki's point that the committee meetings you know, are in the paper, but nobody knows what the finance committee or the <clears throat> Parks and Grounds Committee is going to be discussing so they don't know that it's something that they want to be there to discuss. And that's why this is important because now council is, you know, each committee president is posting the agendas so that people know ahead of time if it's something they want to be there to discuss. So does she keep the money then? Yeah, who, Vicki? Yes, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. she'll get paid. Now, how does that affect, I know some people out there might be saying, man, if I have a bad day at work, I'm going to sue my employer or my boss or whatever the case might be. How does that affect her employment? It's interesting because usually 
you, you sue your boss, you, you may not be at your place of employment that long. How, how do you look at this affecting Vicky's employment if she's doing a suit that they're selling out court? Does I don't know. She's, she's worked for the city for many, many years. I'm not sure how many, but it's been a long time. So, I, and that could be another lawsuit if they fire her over that. Right. So I don't, I don't see that happening, actually. Very interesting. Now, yeah. A couple of real interesting things. I mean, the spring cleanup, I know it's a big thing in uh, Bucyrus. And talk about what you see is happening. Is, is it the same as before, or are they doing anything a little different? It kind of is. I remember years ago when we could set out um, anything, you know, like old broken lawn chairs and stuff like that, and not be charged extra during spring clean week cleanup week but now they're just saying you get six extra bags we're allowed six bags each week um, without being charged extra and during the week of May 4th on your regular garbage day you get to sit out or put 12 bags to the curb but that doesn't help with you know if you have like I said broken chairs I guess I'm using that because I have some that I want to sit out to the curb and that's still gonna be the extra cost that they would charge to take those so it's a good thing if you have a lot of just trash and, and junk that you can bag up to go to the curb but if you have anything else it might be cheaper for you to take it yourself to the dump okay so obviously yeah. that option is always available just to yeah. you may be only willing to do the trash yeah okay very interesting. Um, in the inquire on uh, Wednesday, we had an article uh, about Church in Bucyrus, and um, you actually covered it last year. Um, they're having a fundraiser in the fight against drugs. Um, uh, talk a little bit about what's happening with that. Yeah, it's a fundraiser that will benefit the um, Alpha Recovery. 12-step uh, program, which I've done lots of articles on with Reverend Margie Maddox, and um, and recently the the 12-step now has their own home and and that a uh, few people can live in while they're um, you know being clean and sober and working the program and getting their life back on track, which is wonderful. And um, the Woodlawn United Methodist Church and Bill Denton that goes there, he started this last year um, as a fundraiser to to get everybody together, and it was very well attended last year. Um, they made a lot of money for the program, um, and it's been a very successful program um, in helping addicts get clean and sober. Um, and this year, Cardiac Kids Don Cock. Raft. Yeah, Cockroft. yeah. Uh, Don's actually. Um, yeah, I'm not a football person. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, 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 old fans of the Browns. Um, the Cardiac Kids were the nickname for the Browns team of, I believe, 1980. Um, it just they came back to win a lot of games that they weren't supposed to win. They won things at the last minute. So you know, from guys like their quarterback Brian Sight to other people, a lot of them you know was really great in uh, Cleveland Browns folklore. So one of the unsung heroes, I guess, um, was uh, their kicker, Don Cockroft. Um, he actually lives in the Canton area, and he's going to be coming and making an appearance, and it's kind of neat, you know, to see not just it seems like they're drawing a lot of different types of people to appear and everything in the fundraiser. It should, it should be a pretty interesting thing. Yeah, and that is going to be held on June 6th. Right. And Margie can be reached at 419-689-1412 if people want to register to go to this and, and there's lots of good food I know and lots of other entertainment too um, besides their their main one so that'll be a good event and you might be thinking this the time this is recorded it's mid-April and you're thinking boy I don't know what's happening this week I'm let alone in June but I know from what Bill's saying you know obviously it being a fundraiser it's important to sell some of these tables early you know just yeah. to make it make sense for them so it should be good yeah. well um, thanks Kim I mean just to uh, for participating this week's Inside Bizarre's podcast. We'll be back next week. Um, give us an email at galnews, G-A-L-N-E-W-S, at Civitas Media, C-I-V-I-T-A-S-M-E-D-I-A.com. If any questions you might have, uh, for Kim Gasseris, this is Chris Pugh. Uh, thanks for stopping by the Inside Bizarre's podcast.